Standing on the highway of gray The winds of change are blowing wild and free You ain't seen nothing like me yet I could make you happy, make your dreams come true Nothing that I wouldn't do Go to the ends of the earth for you To make you feel my love He loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, his son, our elder brother, uh, our soon uh, to return Messiah, our conquering king, and the master uh, of our souls. We thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. His compassions, they fail not. Great is his faithfulness unto us. His mercies are new every morning. Amen. 
when you woke up this morning, you woke up into a new mercy, a new kindness, one that you did not earn, but God said you deserve it because you are his child. And so we honor him. So we thank God for those of you who join us today from all around this world, all across this great nation of ours and even here in the city of Charlotte we thank God for you we see those of you who are tuning in we appreciate you I'm not gonna call the list again but come on TCI let's celebrate those who are around we are truly Temple Church International y'all y'all gonna see this in the days to come there's a transition that's gonna happen and it's gonna blow us out of the water but we are truly Temple Church International folk are watching us from the Caribbean folk are watching us from South Africa Australia uh, from Ghana West Africa from uh, we have people joining us from all around this world all across this nation we see you all the way in New Jersey California Texas South Carolina we see you we see you we see you and thank you for joining us we see you Pennsylvania we see you and we thank God for you into the best church anywhere this side of heaven Temple Church International Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank God for the people who are sitting beside you, sitting around you, and the people who are yet at home watching us. I'm telling y'all, y'all better come get a seat. Y'all better come get a seat while they are free. Hallelujah. It's filling up in here. We thank God. And what a... We're, thank you, son. Thank you. And what about that anointed minstrel and ministering vessel that I have the honor and privilege of calling my wife, Lady Tarshe? Come on, let's thank God for... Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, she knows that black is my favorite color, and she ought not have done that this morning. She really should not have. She does not understand yet that she is a potential distraction to the preacher who tries to, uh, uh, she hadn't understood that yet. I'm going to give her one more chance to understand that, and then I'm going to think she's doing it on purpose. And, uh, you are not just try to be a hindrance to the man of God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, Lady Tarshay. What an anointed vessel. Amen. I appreciate you so much. Hosea chapter 3. Hosea chapter 3. We are in our 28 days of self-love. And uh, we thank God for uh, us making it to the day of day, uh, day 20. How many of you have been faithful? Have you been faithful to? Have you been faithful to that? Loving yourself? Taking care of yourself? Wave at me. Holler if you hear me. Amen. 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 We also want to thank God for the music ministry and uh, all who serve in every other capacity. All of the singers, all of uh, the uh, elders and ministers and deacons and the uh, ushers and uh, sound and light. la di da everybody. We thank God for you. We, uh, we thank you for your contribution. And uh, my son, in whom uh, I am I'm well pleased, uh, he's been kind of running around here doing sound and lights, but he can pick up that good time and play it as well. Uh, let's thank God uh, for Minister uh, Phil Hall. Thank God for you, son. We appreciate, appreciate that as well. Um, Hosea chapter number three, uh, I'm going to uh, end this message, this series uh, on self-love. I hope that you have uh, read the book of Hosea from the, from the uh, angle and the context in which I presented it. I know it's a story uh, that uh, most certainly suggests uh, certain dynamics and the like of God's love for us. Um, uh, that all we like sheep have gone astray. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't nobody said nothing, so I'm going to say it again. I said all we, not all y'all, all we like sheep have gone astray. And, and, and it is amazing that uh, um, no matter how far we stray, uh, God never stops loving us. The Bible says that he is married to the backslider. Hello? That he, he's married to the backslider and though he has every reason to divorce us he does not <laughs> the beautiful thing about Hosea's and Gomer's story is this the word of God says something that's really interesting about divorce and this is not on this message is not on divorce or even marriage or any of that but the Bible says that uh, that, that for and because of the hardness of man's heart, Moses gave man a writ of divorcement or gave man a, an out as it relates to marriage. 
but God never commands divorce in Israel. He only permits it. Y'all missed it. He never commands it. He says, this is the reason you can get out of it. So the beauty of Hosea's story, Hosea and Gomer's story is, he could have taken an out, but he didn't. And this is rather sobering when I think of the fact that I've done so much to disqualify myself. And God could have taken an out, but he didn't. Because the wages of sin is still death. And all unrighteousness is sin. So any sin has earned the wage of death. But the gift of God is eternal life. A gift is a gratuitous expression of the giver of the gift towards the recipient that says, I give you this simply because I feel this way about you. I choose to feel this way about you knowing everything I know about you. I don't even think we value eternal life the way we ought to now. Because on your best day, on my best day, our righteousness is as filthy rags. That was the sanitary way of the Bible saying that on your best day, your efforts are nothing more than soiled sanitary napkins. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves me. <laughs> I'm just I'm caught up in it. I'm caught up in it. On my best day, Shemise, I still haven't dotted every I and crossed every T. <laughs> when I think my performance is spotless, God says to him, if it were not the fact that he loved me, it would be useless. He needs nothing from me. I don't care how good you can do something, Kevin, it can be done without you. And probably, no, not probably, and better if someone will submit to my will for their lives. All right, I'm sorry. Whew. Lord, thank you for loving me. <laughs> Lord, thank you for loving me. First week we talked about a sign of self-love being submitting to God's will and accepting his unconditional love. Secondly, we talked about a sign of uh, self-love. And this is not the last, it's the next to the last message, I'm sorry. Second week we talked about repentance. That if you love yourself, you'll just repent. The mercy of God causes you or should cause you to change your mind. And a change of mind will change, uh, will lead to a change of actions. And if you just love it, if you love yourself, <laughs> repentance does not benefit God, it, repent it benefits us. But thirdly, I want to shine a light on something else and then we're going to move. Hosea chapter 3, verse number 1. The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife again. 
though she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer, a lathic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will behave the same toward you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or household gods. Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord, their God, and David, their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Can somebody say amen? amen? Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you now for all things. We thank you for loving us and we thank you for this time that you have given us to explore and examine what you require of us as it relates to loving ourselves. We ask today, God, that you would let revelation knowledge flow, that you would share your heart, that you would reveal your mind. In any way you bless us, we will be satisfied. As always, it is my prayer, God, that if you can use anything, use me. Anoint my mind that I might think your thoughts. Anoint my mouth that I might speak your word. Anoint my body that I might do your will. Then, Father, I ask that you would uh, anoint these, your people, with ears to hear what your word instructs, hearts to receive, minds to understand, and a will to imply whatever, you is, whatever it is that you command us to do. Ain't no way we can have church without you, but with you all things are possible. And so, Father, today we acknowledge your presence and we say, since you're here, throw your weight around. Let the devil know he ain't running nothing. Let hell know that you're still in control. It is in the name of Jesus we pray and we boldly declare that the devil is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is Lord. And all who agreed the prayer of the man of God shouted hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Before you're seated, I want to call one thing to your attention. I want to, I want to uh, uh, look at verse number three. The word of God says, Then I told her, You are to live with me many days. You are not to prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will behave the same way to you. I wish you just touch somebody beside you, turn to them, look them in the face with a smile under your mask if you can. Smile with your eyes so they know you're smiling. Tell them, I know what I bring to the table. Tell somebody else, I know what I bring to the table. Touch yourself and say, self, I know what I bring to the table. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I know what I bring to the table. Good morning, family. My brothers and my sisters, ancient philosopher Aristotle once said, and I quote, dignity does not consist in possessing honors, but rather in deserving them, end quote. According to the Oxford Dictionary of Languages, dignity is defined as a sense of pride in oneself, a sense of self-respect. And I would like to suggest to you that one of the key elements of self-love is dignity. Somebody shout dignity. Now, the Barnes, where there is dignity, sir, there is a sense of intrinsic value and self-worth that is not based exclusively or solely on potential alone. But when I have dignity, somebody ought to shout dignity. Uh, my my sense of intrinsic value and self-worth is also supported by irrefutable and indisputable evidence. 
when I possess a healthy sense of dignity, somebody shout dignity, I understand that I have been charged with the responsibility to honor God, watch this, through not only walking in purpose, but also by protecting my purpose. When I have dignity, shout dignity. I walk in purpose, the prothesis of God, the thing that God has decided for my life, the path that God has decided that I should journey and walk on before I even came. When I have dignity, I love myself enough, as I said in the first message, to submit myself to the call of God, the purpose of God, the will of God for my life. I walk in purpose because I realize that if I walk in purpose, I am protected. And if God be for me, it does not matter who is against me. But not only do I walk in purpose, I protect my purpose. Because I realize, I'm talking already, I protect my purpose. And when I protect my purpose, I am aware of the fact that what I have to offer uh, and that which is presently being offered increases the value of the lives who are privileged to be a part of my life. Minister Diane Barnes, when I walk in purpose and protect my purpose, I will find myself valuing that which God is doing in me. And when I value what God is doing in me, then I set in my heart and my mind to make sure that it is not tainted, that it is not marred, that it ultimately is not, watch this, taken advantage of because if I don't protect my purpose, I must ultimately answer to God in the day of judgment when I protect my purpose I understand the words of Jesus when he says that I should not uh, cast my pearls amongst swine neither should I give that which is holy unto the dogs when I protect my purpose, I understand that it is God who is at work in me, both to will and to do according to his own good pleasure. I see those looks on our faces. I see many of us who are wrestling with this because on the surface, walking with dignity can be misunderstood as being arrogant. But the I'm going to talk with you, I do or not. But the truth of the matter is, when I realize that which God has invested in me, that He charges me to be a steward over it, I then number one have a sense of confidence that God would entrust me with something that would make the lives of those that I come in contact with better. And therefore, I cannot waste it. I cannot spill it. I cannot not arbitrarily just give it away. I must understand that because the call of stewardship is on my life, that I must walk worthy of it. That I must then understand that God is using me. That God God has set me in positions and places, has set me in environments that I might let the light of his presence in me shine, that he might ultimately be glorified. Somebody ought to shout, yes, Lord. The, the sermonic song that was sung this morning, though it will not be found in the Baptist hymnal or on Billboard's Top 40 Gospel, it expresses this very sentiment. It expresses the sentiment, watch this, that when I have been called by God, anointed by God, empowered by God, assigned by God to do what he has called me to do to make the lives of others better, that I will have one, confidence in who God has created me to be. Two, I will have confidence in what God has placed in me. And then three, I have confidence that if I will just do what God has told me to do, it will yield great results. The song was penned by the legendary uh, 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 Bob Dylan. Uh, the, most, the most popular uh, version of the song was sang by Adele. Uh, but my favorite, my favorite song, my favorite version of it was sang by Don't Judge Me. I said, it's still my favorite version. Uh, just sang by Garth Brooks. 
And in this song, the writer is sending a message to the object of his or her affection who seems to be undecided as to whether or not they want to totally commit to receiving and submit to the safety of being covered by his or her unconditional love. He says, he pursues her, she pursues him and says, what I want most is just that you would feel my love. Feel how much love I have for you. Feel how much passion I have for you. But in the midst of this, the verse that I like most is the verse that says the storms are raging on the rolling sea and on the highway of regret. The winds of change are blowing wild and free. Catch this. You ain't seen nothing like me yet. What the writer of the song says to the object of his or her affections is it does not get no better than me. I am confident in the fact that the love that I have for you, that if you will just submit to it, if you will just commit to it, that it will transform your life in areas uh, that your life needs transforming. You ain't seen nothing like me yet. And that is God's message to Israel in the story, in the narrative of Hosea and Gomer. He says to him, Elder Greer, I need you to marry. I need you to marry not just a harlot, but a daughter of harlotry. Which would suggest that now she is at least a second generation prostitute. He says, I need you to marry her for it will symbolize the love that I have for Israel. Israel that continues to seek after other gods. Israel that continues to seek help and seek blessings and seek favor from other areas. Israel, I need you to show them. I need you to feel Hosea what it feels like to love somebody who is undecided about the love that I have for them. He says, I need you not only to marry her, watch this, while she is in her whoredoms, but I need you to marry her as she continues in her whoredoms. Oh God, I'm going to talk to you. Hell, want me to or not? I need you to marry her and don't just sign the papers don't 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 just don't just have the ceremony he says i need you to marry her and produce by her i need you to produce a son i told y'all that the first son was jezreel i need you to produce a son that is definitely yours i need you to produce another child that might be yours and i need you to produce a child or need you to have a child that definitely ain't yours i need need for you, watch this, to marry her accepting the entire package of who she is. And he says, I need you to marry her, watch this, knowing that even after y'all enter into covenant, she is still connected to lovers, watch this, that she looked to and looked to to get from the things that she thought that satisfied her. I'm talking better than y'all responding. This is the narrative. This is the story. And he says, I need for you to show Israel what I'm trying to get you to show Gomer. That when the hand of God and the unconditional love of God operates in you and flows through you. You become a commodity. If you walk in my love, if you let my light shine, if you allow my power to empower you to love on another level, that you then will be you by me, watch this, uh, to help somebody else come back around to who they were called and created to be. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, when then, when then, my brothers and my sisters, you are walking in the dignity of self-love that is not rooted in obnoxious arrogance, but rather is rooted in the knowledge of uh, the fact that you are a vessel of God, invested with the power of unconditional love, you can say unashamedly, and you can say with confidence, I know what I bring to the table, and anyone who has access to 
to it is upgraded and thusly ought to value it as such. Oh, God. Talk, Kevin Long. I believe I will. When you understand that you are so filled with the love of God, when you understand that you are uniquely chosen, uniquely anointed to walk in a level of love, watch this, that God himself walks in. The love, watch this, that has high tolerances and low expectations. The love that is patient, the love that is kind, the love, I'm preaching whether y'all want me to or not, that is not puffed up, that does not vaunt itself. The love that is not easily provoked. The love, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you know that it is God's love that is in you, then you can stand and declare that this love that I have, the world didn't give it and the world didn't take it away. It is the love that's in me that produces a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. It is the love in me that produces a steadfastness and an unmovability uh, and it causes me to always be abounding in the work of the Lord. It is the love in me that is not turned off all the way by the attitudes uh, God, I'm preaching, of apathy and the attitudes uh, of dishonor and the attitudes uh, of dis It is the love in me uh, that says I'm loving not because uh, you are definitely worthy, but I'm loving because the one who saw me in my unworthiness loves me. And now I have an assignment. Now I have a call. Now I have an unction to love in the way that he's loved me. I'm preaching whether y'all want me to or not. And you can say, watch this, with humble confidence that anybody who has the honor and the privilege of being in my space, being loved and served by me, is being upgraded, not because of who I am, but because of who God is in me. I wish you would wave at somebody and say, I know what I bring to the table. It's Bible. Y'all, y'all, please be seated. You better know what you bring to the table. You, you better know that you don't just bring potential, but you bring evidence that's indisputable and that's irrefutable that the hand of God is on your life and that you are unique. Somebody ought to shout, I am unique. I'm rare. I can't be found everywhere. They might act like it, but I can't be found everywhere. They might try to dismiss it, but I can't be found everywhere. They might try to write it off and act like it ain't so, but I can't be found everywhere. Come here for a minute, Abraham. Help me to preach it. God said, Abraham met me one day. I was mourning. Oh, God have mercy. The loss and the death of my brother. I was walking and God stepped up into my space and said, Abram, leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. You're going to be a blessing. Hear this. Everyone who blesses you, I'm going to bless them. He who curses you, God, I will curse him. All the families of the earth and you shall be blessed. Did y'all catch what I said? God said to Abram, if you will submit and commit uh, to walking a life of faith in me, I will make you the point man of blessing. So much so that if anybody blesses you, I'm going to bless them. And if anybody curses you, whether you hear them or not, whether they do it in your face or behind your back, somebody I know what I bring to the table. If Abraham ain't good enough, come here for a minute. Jesus, what is your story? I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. Did you catch what Jesus said? He didn't say I am a way. He didn't say I am a truth. He didn't say I am a life. He's in the sublime confidence of who he was and declared I'm the way. 
the truth, the life. And if you want to get back to your God self, you got to follow my example. I wish you'd touch somebody and say, neighbor, I know what I bring to the table. You might not be Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. You might not be Jesus, but you are his his younger sibling. And I declare and decree by the power of God that's in me that it's time for you to express your self-love by walking in dignity. And I'll even say this, if you know who you are, you ain't got to go running around announcing it. All you got to do is just be. All you got to do is just walk in it. All you got to do is just on a daily basis stay consistent with it. And God will reward you. God, touch somebody else and say, I know who I am. And while you saying I ain't nothing, I'm saying I ain't nothing but a child of God. I know who I am. When you say it don't look like I'm much, I'll say to you, I may not look like I'm much, but I have a treasure in trash. For we have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. Tell somebody beside you, I know what I bring to the table. Please be seated. And here, my brothers and my sisters, we find that by the time of our text, Gomer has been used by her lovers. She has gone from being an exotic entrepreneur to being a sex slave. And God says, God says uh, to Hosea, uh, go back. Ooh, I'm talking. He says, go and show your love to her again. Now, you might not understand this if you have not been reading uh, Hosea. And I encourage you, don't just come Sunday and hear me, but uh, read it. Don't believe what I say. <laughs> Go read it. Be like the Bereans. They received gladly what Paul said, but then they went home to study to see whether or not those things that he said were so. So if you have read then the narrative of Hosea and Gomer, you will find that in chapter 1, that's when the marriage happens. That's when the children are produced. That's when God begins to deal with them and say, because Israel has gone about her own way, he says, I'm going to withdraw my love from her for a minute. That's what he says. He says, in particular, Israel, and uh, I'm going to withdraw it from them, but by the time we get to chapter the two, he not only withdraws his love from Israel, he withdraws his love from Judah. I wish I had time to help y'all understand this. There is a difference because the kingdom was divided. It was the northern kingdom, which was ten and a half tribes of Israel, and then the lower uh, uh, southern kingdom of Israel, which was Judah, which was the tribe of Judah and a half tribe of Manasseh. He says in the first wave, I'm going to, watch this, I'm going to deal with those who don't praise me. I'm going to deal with those who are arrogant and going after their own way and living their own lives and doing things the way they want to. I'm going to deal with them, but oh, I'm coming for the praisers next. He said in chapter 2, I'm coming for those who participate God have mercy in the activity of praise, but don't have an attitude of praise. I'm coming to those that you can't sit down, that a team of 150 ushers cannot settle when the praise breaks out. I'm coming for those that smell and salt can't wake up. Ah, God, and those who sweat off their makeup and sweat out their hair and sweat out their suits and make a rigmarole and make a whole bunch of noise in the house but will not praise me throughout 
out the I'm coming for y'all, and I'm getting ready to withdraw my love for a season from everybody. Oh God, if I had 30 minutes to preach, I would preach about that and that alone. Just because you say hallelujah don't mean that it's lining up. I'm going to preach whether y'all want me to or not. You can run, jump, and shout. I can preach, teach. I can dance. I can sing like angels. I can do all of that. But if I don't do it in love, love for him and love for us, it will profit me nothing. If I don't bring myself under subjection to walk and live in a lifestyle where I realize my life is praise and worship to God, I will be a castaway. And God, I don't want you to cast me away. And so now, he comes to chapter number three. He says, I know she left, and I know you got tired of going back after her. And I gave you a season to sit down and let her do whatever she wanted to do. But now I'm speaking to you. I'm preaching whether y'all want me to or not. And I'm telling you to go after her. Go show love to her again. Oh, God, did y'all hear what I said? Uh, let me see if I can fix the scriptures. The scriptures say it this way, Deacon Nicky. Uh, God, anger, it lasts but for a moment. But his favor is for life. Y'all miss what I said. It ain't that God don't get angry. He does get angry. I know he gets angry because I've had him be peeved off with me. I said peeved. I didn't say the other word. I know what it's like for God not to speak or not to be able to hear him. I know what it's like to know that it ain't the devil that's stopping whatever it is I'm trying to do. But it's God who will not let it prosper because I need to get my act together. I know what it's like to feel distance from him because I don't feel like praying and I don't and he's saying to me, in prayer ain't never based upon how you feel. Prayer is an act of intimacy. And the, and the time you ought to pray is when you don't feel like it. The time you ought to read and study is when you're tired and feel like ain't nothing working. The time that you ought to fast and the time that you ought to recommit is when it seems like I put you on my backside. Am I preaching to anybody in here who knows what it's like to have seasons of distance from God? But thanks be unto the God who loves us. That just like God told Hosea to go back and get Gomer, he decided to come and find us. I wish you'd wave at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm glad that God got over his anger with me. I'm glad that God got over being tight, being upset, being uptight, being mad. I'm glad that God got over keeping distance from me and came looking for me so he could bless me. Come here for a minute, Adam. Help me to preach it. When you and he ate the fruit that God said not to eat, what was God's response? We hid ourselves. We were ashamed. And yet in the midst of our guilt, the voice of God came walking through the wilderness, came walking through the garden looking for us. Am I preaching to anybody in here besides me who's glad that in the midst of your mess, in the midst of your turmoil, in the midst of your guilt, in the midst of the stuff that you created, God came looking for you. Lift your hands, open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. God says, Hosea, tell Israel, I know what I bring to the table. I need to tell somebody in here who needs to walk in a level of dignity that is encouraged and inspired by self-love. I need to tell you, 
how to know, how to assert without being arrogant, good God, how to proclaim and claim uh, without being conceited that you know what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And what you bring to the table ain't just an appetite and eating utensils. <laughs> I ain't just coming asking for a meal. I ain't just coming asking for a handout. I'm bringing something to the situation that will upgrade it to a level that it has never been before. Uh, God, I think somebody need to lift your hand now, open your mouth and shout, I know what I bring to the table. Well, my brothers and my sisters, the first thing uh, Hosea would tell us, uh, the first thing the scriptures tells us, watch this, that when you want to develop a healthy sense of self-dignity, when, when, when you want to develop a healthy sense of self-love, every once in a while, you must release reminders of the price that you paid for loving unconditionally. Okay, let me say that again. Release reminders for the price that you paid for loving unconditionally. I ain't making it up. It's right here in the text. Somebody ought to shout. The text says, the text says that he told, uh, oh, he told uh, Hosea, uh, go show love to your wife again. Watch this. Though she is presently loved by another man and is an adulteress, <laughs> an adulteress, love her, love her like I love Israel, love her mad but still love her. <laughs> Love her disappointed, but still love her. Love her insulted, but still love her. She has gone after foreign gods uh, and, uh, and the love of the sacred raisin cakes. She has been selling herself, watch this, uh, for what was the going rate uh, uh, for high-level prostitutes in that day. I'm talking with y'all want me to or not. And listen to what Hosea says. He says, I obeyed God, and so I bought her for 15 shekels of silver, about a homer and a ledeck of barley. Y'all didn't catch this. She is his wife. Legally, they are tied together. They are in covenant. God says, go get her, and notice what he does. He pays the price for what's already his. Is this too deep for a Sunday morning? He pays the price for who already belongs to him. Uh, notice what he did not pay. He did not pay the prostitute fee. He did not pay the raisin cakes. He paid a slave's ransom. Y'all miss what I said. He paid the ransom for someone who is now enslaved and in bondage. She belongs to him. But he pays for, he pays for her as if she didn't. Y'all miss what I said. Oh God. Every once in a while, you got to do like God does. Remember what God said to Israel when he delivered them out of Egypt. He bought them out. He bought them through the Red Sea. The Bible declares that he calls Moses up to the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And when Moses comes down, he says, I got these words from God. And in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 5, he reminds them that don't get beside yourself. I am the God who delivered you out of bondage in Egypt when you could not help yourself. When you were soiled with the sins of Egypt, when you were tore up from the flow up, when you were jacked up, when you were being used and abused, when you were being mistreated and mishandled, I came and paid a price for you like you were not mine. Oh, God have mercy. I paid that man. Y'all gonna hear me? I paid him like you belong to him. Oh, God, I'm gonna preach whether y'all want me to or not. I prayed because 
like you paid like you belong to him. I, I paid it all so I could get you. Okay, let me see if I can fix this. Uh, uh, look straight ahead. Won't nobody know I'm talking about you. But if you ever had to pawn something, you pawn it and you get, watch this, less than what it is worth. But when you get it out of the pawn shop, you got to not only get, you got to not only pay, watch this, what you accepted for it, but you got to pay interest on it. Y'all miss what I say. It's yours, but you got to pay for it like it ain't. And every once in a while, I'm talking to those of you that people are treating you like a doormat, acting like they you owe them certain kinds of treatment, acting like you owe them certain kinds of luxuries and latitudes and longitudes, acting like it wasn't you who helped them to get on their feet. It wasn't you huh, to help them get their lives in order. It wasn't you huh, who treated them better huh, than they've ever been treated in your life. Every once in a while, huh, you got to at least remind yourself huh, to say no matter what they say to me, no matter what they say about me, I know what I bring to the table. Huh, and if the story was really told, huh, if the story was really represented correctly, they would tell the truth. Huh, and the truth is this, uh, that before I stepped into the picture, everything was chaotic. Everything was confusing. I'm going to talk whether y'all want me to and come here. Help me to preach it, God. God said, Ezekiel, tell them uh, that when I found them, uh, they were drowning in their mother's blood. Uh, they had the umbilical cord wrapped around their throat. Uh, but I picked them up. Uh, I washed them and I cleansed them. Uh, I'm giving some of y'all a license uh, to get your dignity back huh? to stop letting people huh? treat you like a doormat huh? no baby I ain't a doormat huh? I'm a doorway huh? a doorway huh? to better huh? a bad doorway huh? to more huh? a doorway huh? to different huh? lift your hands open your mouth and shout yes Lord thank you sir. so when you know what you bring to the table Please be seated. You know what you bring to the table. We know what God is doing through you. You'll remind yourself and need be others. <laughs> the price you paid for loving unconditionally. Huh? <laughs> when, when you know what you bring to the table, you can tell your children I ain't perfect. <laughs> but you ain't missing no meals. <laughs> You got a roof over your head, and you had it for oh God, I don't preach for the other. And you had it for for the twelve years that you were in school, and before that, I'm talking whether you want me to or not. And with my stuff, and with my flaws, and with all of that, I gave the best I had to you, and here you are today. Number two, number two, um, when you know what you bring to the table, watch this, uh, raise and hold on to your standards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, raise, hold on to your standards. I ain't making it up, it's right here in the text. God told him, he said, go get her. <laughs> Lord, I love this. Go show her love again, even though she's still committed to the lovers that abused her. They used to run after her when she was fine. But now that she got mileage on her, she running after them. Oh, okay. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, sisters, I'm equal opportunity offender this morning. Uh, all the honeys used to run after him. <laughs> but now that he got miles on him. <laughs> and now that everything he had has been taken by those who only used him for what he had, <laughs> now he's running after them. Mm -hmm. uh, he's accepting any kind of treatment now. He used to be the man. Mm -hmm. All right. So he says, I got to get out of here. Uh, love her. <laughs> and notice what he does. He pays the price. Oh, he does something. I'm almost done. <laughs> He does something, Minister Neal, that God doesn't tell him to do. God doesn't tell him to pay the slave's ransom, but he does it anyway. He brings her now back into the security of the relationship. But look at verse number two. He says, once I paid the price, then I told her, you ought to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or intimate with any man. And I will behave the same way towards you. I'm almost done. He does not just purchase her. He does not just go get her. But what he says is if now we are going to live in the sanctity of this relationship, there are some rules and some standards that we must abide by. And if we don't abide by these rules and these standards, the nature of the relationship will always be tenuous, will always be rocky, will always be turbulent. He says, I bought you, I paid the price, I upgraded you, I brought you into relationship with me again. Again, into a place of safety. The first thing you got to do, he says, here is the first rule. The first rule is you got to live with me many days. In other words, you have to quit running around. You have to quit pursuing other things. I bought you back from the lovers that abuse you. Now, you must stop running after them. You must prefer me over. I told y'all last week that God was jealous and his name is jealous. He is not jealous of you. He is jealous for you. He wants the kind of love back from you that he shows to you. He don't want you giving glory to idol gods for stuff he does. I'm going to preach whether you want me to or not. God is so anal about this is that when they set him up in the house of Obed, y'all remember how they opened the door and they saw that the, that the God, the foreign God, the God though it had fallen over in the presence presence of God. Uh, God says, if you're going to live peacefully with me in this situation, you're going to have to live up to my standards. Stop running. Then number two, he didn't just say stop running, but here's the second thing. I love this, y'all. He said, not only should you stop running, but you can't you got to stop uh, prostituting yourself out. Oh, God. Y'all hear what I said? You have to be content with what you are getting in this season of restoration. And it may not be what you were used to getting. God have mercy. When you were in your heyday, be 
being used by your lovers, but you didn't know that you were being used. He said, but know that because you're being loved unconditionally and know that because you're being accepted as you are, that it can only get better from here. And some of y'all need to learn how to hold on to standards and how to hold on to your dignity and say that I'm giving to you stuff that money can't buy. I don't care how many pairs of Jordans your, your friend's parents buy them. Ah, oh God, they don't invest time in them. I wish I had a witness. I don't care how much they try to give them what they didn't have. I ain't trying to give you what you never had. I'm trying to teach you what you never learned. And if you learn what I teach you, you'll be able to get the rest of it for yourself. And then he said, he said, watch this. I'm going to treat you in the same way. So when you walk in dignity and walk in self-love, you become the example. But you don't lower your standard to accept any kind of treatment. I don't care how you feel. You ain't going to talk to me any kind of way. When I paid the price to help you get to where you are, I don't care what you think about me. There's a certain level of treatment that I deserve. And I'm going to give it back to you. And we can either have peace in this thing or we can stay together and it's still be turbulent and rocky because I ain't going to bulge on my standards of dignity and self-worth. So you either come up to my level and we be on the same page. I'm talking to somebody in here. Somebody's getting ready to go back to your job and tell your supervisor, you may be my supervisor, but I ain't your slave. And you ain't going to talk to me any sort of way. The numbers have been up ever since I've been here. I've been underpaid, overworked, and I've been doing what it is I need to do to make sure that your department looks good. I will not take another day of disrespectful jargon towards me before I take it anymore. I'll quit and trust God to give me another position. Lift your hands, open your mouth and shout yeah. I'm talking to if you love yourself stop letting yourself be treated like yesterday's trash I'm talking to somebody enough is enough number three number three listen to what he says uh, if you love yourself and I covered this in the last one you will not lower yourself to their last standard. <laughs> I promise y'all gonna shout about this when y'all start applying it. Notice what he says. You gotta stay here. You can't run after your lovers. Uh, can't pray to prostitute no more. <laughs> like, when I came and got you, you were in active Holotry. But because we got a covenant, you can't act like you ain't married. <laughs> then he says, watch this. Um, and it's a small point, and I'm done. He says, and I will behave the same towards you. This is not a contingency. This is not saying that if you keep running after your lovers, I won't run after lovers myself. What he says is this, God have mercy. <laughs> he says, I am going to show you an example of dignity and self-love by not lowering myself to self-defeating and self-depriving behavior. 
so that my very presence, I got to get out of here. My very presence will agitate and irritate the demons that are in you. I ain't going to do unto you as you do unto me. I am going to do unto you as I would have you do unto me. God, I'm going to preach whether y'all will be to or not. There is something about having a level of dignity that will not allow you to lower yourself to standards that are beneath what God has for you. There is something about having grown to the level that I am no longer responding to the stimuli of your foolishness, but I am standing on the truth of God's word. All right, ladies, next time, next time a man flips on you, you ought to go read 1 Peter 3. Bible says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Lord. For if any obey not the truth, they may without the word be one. When they behold your chaste and controlled conversation coupled with fear, hallelujah, when they see how you don't respond the way they respond, when they flip and you chill, when they act up and you just keep on walking in the calmness of you know of what you know God has told you. He said because if they don't respond then he says you are just like Sarah's daughters. Your beauty ain't outward. Your beauty ain't the plaiting of hair. The wearing of gold. The wearing of ornaments. But it is the prize. The priceless prize of a gentle and quiet spirit. And says watch this if they flip on you I'll deal with them I'm gonna preach whether you want me to or not all right brothers let me give y'all a little something so y'all can shout about come here for a minute David help me to preach it you have gone to get to recover and retrieve the ark of the covenant you come back and because you're happy you're dancing and twirling and you're going crazy for God and you come out of your clothes and your wife McCall is looking up at a window looking down her nose at you and calls you and says how undignified did the king of Israel look today as he danced out of his clothes before these base and low women of Israel David said I ain't doing this for them I'm doing it for you he said and if you got a problem with that I'll be more undignified than that because I'm praising him y'all miss what I said and the Bible says that God cursed McCall's womb and she was never able to produce children what I'm trying to tell you is don't you lower your standard to somebody who does not see your value or your worth but I dare you to walk in the power and the authenticity of the anointing that God has placed on you I dare you to walk in that next level of love that says I'm so confident that he that began a good work in me shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ I dare you in the midst of criticism and fault finding and the like to declare that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I dare you to walk in the power and the authority of the supernatural anointed that's on your life that declares that I'm blessed touch your neighbor and say Shed abroad in your heart and 
by the Holy Ghost uh, and you're blessed uh, because you understand uh, that you don't let nothing uh, separate you uh, from the love of God uh, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, can I go high and uh, tell somebody else, uh, say neighbor, uh, if you know uh, what you bring to the table uh, tomorrow morning, uh, walk in your place of empire knowing that they're devils knowing that they're demons knowing that they're people who are trying to scheme and play and plot your downfall walk in and declare this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I promise you that if you walk in the authority that God has placed in you, if you walk in love, if you walk in peace, if you walk in joy, if you walk in kindness, then the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I feel, I feel, I feel like preaching. Yes, I do. Tell somebody, you know what you bring to the table. Walk like it. Talk like it. Stand like it. Talk like it. Teach like it. Dance like it. Shout like it. Live like it. Hey, hey, hey. Can I go high? I got one more thing I need to tell you. When you know that you know that you know that God lives in you, loves through you, you can boldly declare. of who God said you are. God is your shield. He is your protector. He is your provider. And you can say if God be for me, who can? Who can? Who can? Who can be against me? The world it's like nothing at all. I dare somebody to lift your hand, open your mouth, and go to praising God because you know what you bring to the table. And when you bring it, you're bringing God. I bring God. I bring anointing. I bring power. I bring authority. I bring healing. I bring restoration. I bring full of glory on the count of three. Praise him like you've lost your mind. One, two, three. Pass it down your road. I may not be perfect, but I bring something that has great value. I bring something that has great worth. I bring with me the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! I know, I know, I know, I know, 
want to touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophet no harm. Keep talking, keep fighting, keep planning, keep strategizing, keep scheming, but victory is mine. It's time for you to stop playing small. You are too ebullient, too beautiful, too multifaceted in your anointing. And God says, I'll protect you if you protect what I'm doing in you. I'm done. No more discounts. Sometimes you got to realize that bargain, bargain shopping minded people, rummage sale minded people don't know how to respect boutique. know how if all they've been used to is getting things for cheap don't know how to handle rare stuff and don't you let anybody convince you that because you have dignity and self-worth and will not allow them to treat you any way they want to treat your stuff any way they want to don't you allow them to lure you into feeling bad into feeling guilty they don't know the price that you pay. That you continue to pay. The problem with some of y'all is you're letting people judge you based upon the period of your life that they met you. I don't know who I'm talking to. Some people don't understand, you lost more than they'll ever have. You survive more than they'll ever have to deal with. And just cause you don't look like what you've been through, don't mean you ain't been through. Stop playing small. Stop playing small. God said you owe it to him and owe it to yourself to stop playing small. And he said, for those of you who've been wrestling with revenge, he says the best revenge is to succeed. Sometimes you have to subtract yourself from the equation to show that you were, you were the variable, watch this, with the greatest value. Sometimes you got to do like God did. God got to say, okay, I'm going to let y'all handle this for a minute, Israel and Judah. I'm going to let y'all go after your gods. I'm going to let you do all this kind of stuff. I'm cool with it. I'm going to let you go ahead and deal with the frustration of it and to see that once I subtract myself, I don't know who I'm talking to. You're playing small. You've done it for too long. And this ain't air. You are probably one of the most humble people. And sometimes people will, watch this. When you start walking in dignity, watch this. When you stop taking stuff, they will say that because you're walking in that kind of dignity, you're no longer walking in humility. But the humble person, according to the scriptures, they humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. So they submit to what God wants them to do. And oftentimes submitting to what God wants you to do means that you're no longer submitted to what people want you to do. 
So I want to pray for those of us who are at the, I, I, I want to pray, I want to pray for those of you who said, Bishop, you know what, you talking to me today. I've been, I've, been, I've been selling myself short. I've been trying to play humble. I've been, try, I've been trying to, you know, hide who I am and hide what I've been gifted with to make people comfortable. God said the greater sin is yours, making people feel comfortable with mishandling you. Because if you walk in who you were created to be, you would be a blessing to them. People treat you the way that you allow them. And I know this ain't a, I know this ain't, this ain't a popular uh, 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 altar call, but those of you who say, you know what, Bishop, you talking to me. I spent my life, try, watch this, trying to, trying to win affection, trying to win like, trying to win support, trying to get everybody to see, you know, how, how nice I am and see all that kind of stuff. And I've, if God says some of you have been giving, 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 and you're broke. You're not just broke financially, you're broke spiritually, you're broke emotionally. God said because you were not a good steward over what I was doing in your life. And he says, I'm giving you a second chance. Today is your second chance. And it may be family, it may be spouses, it may be children, it may be lifelong friends, it may be church members, it may be whoever. But God said, I'm holding you responsible because I gave you those pearls. And I gave you that holy, that distinct thing. And I told you not to cast your pearls amongst the swine and give that which is holy or watch this dedicated to me to dogs. And you kept doing it, trying to win approval and win favor. And he says, the more you gave, the more they took. The more you tried to help, the more they hurt. Walk in your authority. Come a little closer, please. Your life is getting ready to shift because the devil tried to fool you in thinking that self-love was self-indulgence to make it all about you. But no, when you really love yourself, you make it all about God and the purpose and the plan of God in your life. <laughs> Bible says that when they saw the miracles that Jesus did, they wanted to commit to him. They wanted to make him a king, but Jesus would not because he knew what was in their hearts. And he needed, had no need that anyone would testify of him. There's sometimes your discernment kick in. Watch this. And when the Holy Spirit is trying to say things to you by way of discernment and you ignore it, that means that you are quenching the Spirit. And when you quench the Holy Spirit, that means that you insult him. And when you insult the Holy Spirit, he withdraws for a season. And you keep getting more of what you've always gotten because you didn't use your discernment. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but there is nobody, and I mean absolutely nobody in your life that you can't do without. Especially if you're doing God's will. And the enemy is messing with your mind and trying to make you think that you're the one who can't make it without them. he'll have you in a place of low self-esteem where you will just accept what you can get. <sighs> he'll have Lazarus thinking that because he's a beggar that he ain't insignificant until after the rich man dies and when the rich man dies and goes to hell and lifts up his eyes the first thing he said he says to father abraham send lazarus send lazarus he didn't say <laughs> god ever he didn't say send david he didn't say send ezekiel ezekiel isaiah he said send the one that i daily may think that he was less than me could not do without me because he was eating the crumbs from the table that the dog <laughs> y'all hear what i'm saying Send him because I finally realized that it wasn't me who had the juice, it was him. God's getting ready to make people in this season see who you really are if you will just submit to him. If you'll just submit to him, if you will just guard, stop taking. I'm telling you, some of you get ready to transition. I gotta pray. Some of you get ready to transition. 
you're going to stop taking anything that people offer you. <laughs> You've gotten used to it. You're going to stop. Once you start realizing who you are, a friend of mine was about to commit suicide years ago. And I had another friend flew to where he was. He was in a, he was in a bad situation. And I told him, man, remember who you are. Because you're not who, you're not who what you've done. We ministered to him. And now his life is so impactful now. It makes no sense. I'm saying the same thing to you. You're not what you, you're not even your choices. Hosea chose to marry Gomer. It doesn't change the fact that the prophet was the most honorable position in Israel and the prostitute was the most dishonorable. You're not your choices. Don't let anybody hold them over your head. You've given too many people too many chances to come up to standard and they still won't do it. God said, I won't release your next to you until you release that. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you today. These are your people at this altar because this word has appealed to them. In this season of self-love, Father, we receive again our dignity. Wherever we lost it, however we lost it. We've given it away to people. We've given it away to situations and circumstances that used our talents, used our gifts, used our anointing, that used us but didn't care about us. Now today, Father, we thank you. We repent for those times that we were not stewards over what you entrusted us with. We repent and we receive forgiveness. And now, God, we thank you for the shift in every area of our lives. We, like Hosea, will hold on to the standards. We, we will understand, God, our worth. We'll understand our value. And then, God, we will live, watch this, according to the way you would have us to live. We'll separate ourselves and be separate <laughs> for your purpose and your plans. Now, God, I want you to heal every hurt that's represented at this altar. Every hurt, every secret pain. Everything that they are even ashamed to admit that is hurt and cut them deeply. Heal now. Deliver now, set free. Give them joy, the oil of joy dancing for morning give them soft hearts and tough skin for this next season now Jesus the last thing I want you to do is to reward this decision by a season of restoration Anything material or immaterial, visible or invisible, tangible or intangible that they've lost, restore it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at me before you go back to your seat, please. David and his men came back and found Ziklag having burnt down. And when everybody wanted to stone him, David did something that all of you should do and all of us should do. He strengthened or he encouraged himself in the Lord. And he went and talked to God about his mistake and asked God what he should do. Should I go after should I pursue and overtake them? Watch. Should I pay 
paid them back for what they did to me. And you know what he said? He said, I want you to pursue them, but I want you to recover all. David asked God nothing about recovery. He didn't ask him about getting his stuff back. He said, should I go after him? And what he meant, should I go after him and just, you know, do to them what they did to me? He said, I want you to go after them and just recover everything you lost. And read the story. There wasn't a big battle that ensued. The enemy ran <laughs> so they could get their stuff back. The Lord said, in this season, the enemy is going to leave in your faithfulness. What's been fighting it against you going to just back up? Deacon Marcia, the Lord told me in the shower about two weeks, two weeks ago, he said, when I make your enemies be at peace with you, he said, that doesn't mean that they're going to like you. He said, it means that they're going to be at peace with the fact that no matter what they think about you, it don't change nothing. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I said? He's going to make your enemy be at peace with you, at peace with the fact that no matter what they do, no matter what they say, no matter what they try, no matter what they say behind your back, no matter what happens, he says, it ain't going to change nothing. Go back to your seat now. I'm done. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you believe that Temple Church International is the place for you, you can come, please, ma'am, please, sir. Now we want to receive you. We thank God for you. If you're watching, you can go to our website, tci-charlotte.com, and uh, fill out our new members form there. You don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can say, Lord, save me, and he will. Now I'm not sick here. Y'all don't even know what you're in the midst of right now. Y'all don't even know what transition is happening right under your noses. You don't even know that by next year, this time, your life is going to look totally different. You have no idea that you're about to see the manifestation of Ephesians 3 and 20. God doing exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think according to the power that works in you. Many of you have asked God to do something. God said you didn't set the bar high enough. I'm going to blow your mind by doing this next thing in your season all because you learned how to love yourself. I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build and vineyards that you didn't plant. He said, I really am going to make your enemies be at peace with you. Just watch. He said, I'm going to handle them. I'm gonna, you ain't going to have to lift a finger. You ain't going to have to do a thing. God said, right now, I'm defending you against what tried to destroy you. And you're going to see it with your own eyes. Let's stand, please. y'all. Drew, I see your future, sir. Keep trusting him. I see it. They call you crazy now. They're going to call you a genius later. Keep. Right, let's go. If you haven't given your offering, please, ma'am, please, sir. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. I don't know what our offering looked like today, but I'm going to ask, please, ma'am, please, sir, as we're in this season where we're encouraging motivational giving, that you would give so. Those of you who can give a seed of $100, if you've already given your tithe, your offering, do so. Those of you who can give a seed of 50 do so. But please, ma'am, please, sir, be found giving. You can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. He's waiting to push you to a whole nother level. He's waiting to usher you into another income bracket. Every business owner in here ought to sow a hundred dollar seed. Sow it for your business. It's a natural seed, but it'll do a supernatural thing. Whoever you are, we're getting ready to go home. We're going to give the benediction. If you want to bring the offering, the seed, you can give it. You can lay it here. I feel God all over me today, y'all. Get your dignity back. 
Get your dignity back. As long as you take what you can get, you'll never get what you want. As long as you take what you can get, you will never get what God has for you. Hear me. Be willing to be without for a season. So that you can live in a season of abundance and sufficiency and overflow in every area of your life. Be willing to be alone. God's going to send you people who love you genuinely and purely. I'm telling you now. Some of you are in the midst of a circle shift and a circle change. That's what God is doing. Stop mourning over what is, has left and start rejoicing over what is coming. God told Moses to tell Aaron, don't even go to the funeral of Nadab and Abihu. Don't uncover your head. You go back and do the work that I've assigned you to do. Don't mourn over what has been a detriment to you. You got a soul tie with certain things. It's a soul tie. It's no good for your life, but it felt good in your last season. It don't even feel good now. Let it go. Beloved, remember you're going along your way now to render no one evil for evil, render everyone good for good, overcome evil with good, and render your all unto the most high God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest and abide with you henceforth now and forevermore. All who agree with the prayer of the man of God shout hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Just turn to somebody, hug them, tell them, I know what I bring to the table. Ask them, do you know what you bring to the table? Those of you who are watching, know what you bring to the table. Love you much. Take care.